Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and today we will look at subchorionic hemorrhage on ultrasound. Subchorionic hemorrhage refers to bleeding outside the gestational sac. Blood accumulates between the chorion and the uterine wall. We will compare the ultrasound appearance of a normal pregnancy with the appearance of subchorionic hemorrhage. You will see many cases of subchorionic hemorrhage which will help you in diagnosing such cases on ultrasound. We will be mainly focusing on the gestational sac appearance, so the gestational age of the embryo or fetus in both the images may not match. This comparison is mainly based on abnormalities seen outside the gestational sac. In the left image, we can see a normal early pregnancy. The gestational sac is seen with a normal embryo. The boundaries of the gestational sac are smooth. No dark or hypoechoic area is seen at the boundary. And over here we have a case of subchorionic hemorrhage. This pregnancy is more advanced than the image on the left. A subchorionic hemorrhage appears as a hypoechoic dark area between the gestational sac and the uterine wall. The placenta is also present here. It is common for the hematoma to be seen near the margin of the placenta. During early pregnancy, the embryo implants into the wall of the uterus and establishes the placenta. This process involves the invasion of the maternal endometrium by trophoblastic cells, which can sometimes cause small blood vessels to rupture leading to a bleed at or near the implantation site, which is typically at the placental margin. Causes of subchorionic hemorrhage include trauma and direct injuries, maternal conditions such as clotting disorders or hypertension, hormonal changes, any infections involving the reproductive tract, any history of previous pregnancy complications such as a previous subchorionic hemorrhage or a miscarriage. The shape of the hemorrhage is usually crescentic. Although color doppler is not recommended in early pregnancy, it can be used sparingly in some situations such as a subchorionic hemorrhage. A very short application of Doppler can be used to check for vascularity. The hemorrhage will not show any blood flow. No Doppler signals will be found inside the fluid collection. This feature differentiates it from other masses. Some hypoechoic and heterogeneous areas are seen around a normal gestational sac. They appear because of decidual reaction, in which there is thickening of the endometrium around the gestational sac. Another reason they appear is because of implantation bleeding, often seen in early pregnancy. It occurs as the embryo implants into the uterine lining, which causes bleeding. So the presence of some small hypoechoic and heterogeneous areas is normal. These areas are small blood clots, the endometrium and blood vessels. In the image on the right, there is a prominent hypoechoic crescent shape fluid collection adjacent to the gestational sac. It is also near the margin of the placenta. This is the subchorionic hemorrhage. An acute subchorionic hemorrhage or SCH appears hyperechoic 
and heterogeneous because of fresh clotted blood. Clotted blood appears hyperechoic. It can be difficult to locate this hematoma when it is at an acute stage. Over time, the echogenicity of the hematoma starts to decrease. A subacute SCH becomes less echogenic. A chronic hematoma will appear hypoechoic due to liquefaction and resorption of the hemorrhage. This is a large hematoma. Subchorionic hemorrhage can be classified as small, medium, and large. Its size is compared with the gestational sac size. A small hemorrhage is less than 20% of the gestational sac size. A medium sized hemorrhage will be 20 to 50% of the gestational sac size. A large hemorrhage will be greater than half the size of the gestational sac, greater than 50%. A large hemorrhage has a higher risk of complications such as a miscarriage or preterm delivery. This is another large hematoma. It is greater than 50% of the gestational sac size and carries a higher risk of complications. In the normal image on the left, you can see a smooth gestational sac. No hypoechoic fluid collection is seen next to the gestational sac. In the image on the right, a crescent-shaped hypoechoic fluid collection is seen near the gestational sac. This is the subchorionic hemorrhage. This is another case of a subchorionic hemorrhage. A hypoechoic fluid collection is seen next to the gestational sac in early pregnancy. In a normal pregnancy, no such hypoechoic fluid collection is seen next to the gestational sac. This image also shows a hypoechoic fluid collection next to the gestational sac, indicating a subchorionic hemorrhage. In this image, there is a small subchorionic hemorrhage. Small hemorrhages usually do not cause any complications and can resolve on their own. Further monitoring on ultrasound is required to evaluate the size of the hemorrhage. This was a subchorionic hemorrhage. It appears as a hypoechoic heterogeneous fluid collection. It did not show any internal vascularity on color Doppler. This hemorrhage appears multiseptated. This type of appearance can also be seen in an SCH. It is a large hemorrhage and carries high risk of pregnancy complications. Now we will look at complications associated with a large hemorrhage. A large hemorrhage increases the risk of miscarriage, especially in the first trimester. The next complication is a preterm delivery, a premature delivery. This is because a large hemorrhage can disrupt blood flow to the fetus, which ultimately leads to premature delivery. In a severe case of hemorrhage, placental abruption can occur in which the placenta partially detaches from the uterine wall. It is a very serious and fatal complication of pregnancy. The placenta will have hypoechoic areas. This is the placenta. It is very irregular in shape and heterogeneous in appearance. There is a large hypoechoic and heterogeneous area in and behind the placenta, indicating placental separation. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned 
for more imaging videos.